What's up guys, John Hammond here, showcasing more Pico CTF, and in the last video, I actually kind of forgot to remind us, or remind you, or even myself, to take note of the flag that we got from a challenge, Leaf of the Forest, and mark that challenge as complete in our own, like, directory backlog of, of what we've been doing in the Capture the Flag game. So I wanted to do that, and I actually thought this would be an awesome opportunity to showcase how we can write our own get flag script and automate not just, like, we don't want to save a static copy of the flag, but we want to, like, actively retrieve the flag in our own encapsulated process, in our own script or program. So since we've already written a small script with the shebang line and just the SSH command, uh, that allowed us to get into the shell, the shell server, but we can do stuff while we're connected in that as just a single, like, one trigger fire execution in that SSH command. So I want to show you how you can do that. Um, let's go ahead and check out that shell script one more time. If I cat that out, you can notice that it is simply the command to connect to the Pico CTF, like, shell server. But if I tried to run that on its own, we log in, right? But SSH will let us run a command at the very, very end of its like actual argument here, at, at the end of the entire command that we run. So if I wanted to, I could run who am I, just tacked on at the end, and it'll explain, okay, I've connected to the server, I've evaluated and ran the command who am I, here's the result, I'll give that back to you, and I'll drop you back to your original computer. You won't you won't maintain the connection. So if I wanted to run like PWD or what what directory I'm am I in, present working directory, it will explain that. Cool. So we can get output of commands and we can take advantage of this. Our shell script won't easily do this because we can't run like shell like who am I? Because it doesn't know to give that to our SSH command. We can tell it to do that by having our shell script support a command line argument, or like we've been using arguments before and all these other commands, but we need to tell our, our, our script to do that actually as well. So let's modify our shell script, and then at the very, very end, we can actually pass in just like a string, but with a variable. With the variable denoted in bash, that will actually have value to it that can change. Just like you may see that in other programming languages, or if you haven't experienced that at all, it's something that has data, but can change. It can vary, hence a variable. So uh, command line arguments are kind of special because they have a like specific syntax to be able to use them. Every variable in bash starts with a dollar sign, but the command line arguments are numbered 0 through 9, etc., or things that you pass to it. 0 is actually the name of the script or how you invoke it, so dot slash shell dot sh, but dollar sign $1 is going to refer to the actual first argument we give it. So let's leave that here. Let's control O, save this, and now I can run that same command, dot slash shell dot sh, with who am I as an argument, and it's passing it along to that SSH command, just like we did originally when we simply ran it with the entire SSH command, but it's just encapsulated in our shell. So now, if I go into our Leaf of the Forest fo folder, we can write a get flag script, nano get flag dot sh. Again, we have to use our shebang line, and we can evaluate that shell command, that shell script that will make a connection to the shell server, and then we'll take the location of this guy. We want to find this. And we're going to have to piece this together because we did actually remember to chmod all of your scripts, make sure they're executable. Because we need to know that directory or that actual notion here where the flag actually exists. Scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. I know we found it eventually. Okay, I see it right here, and this is the absolute path, but it gives us everything. That is the entire path of the flag. So we can change in our script, now that we know that that is the solution, simply cat that, and that essentially will just cat the flag for us, right? In our own get flag script, it's connecting the server all in one go, displaying the flag for us, and it acts as its own get flag script. Cool. So now, if we wanted to, we could just redirect that 
or save that output to another file. This arrow will redirect it, the shift form of the period. No output will be displayed to the console, but we can check out flag.txt, what was just created, and now we have that. I like to do both. I like to create a get flag script, save a local copy of the flag just in case something breaks or the CTF goes down, so I know what that flag actually was. And we'll have a lot of these get flag scripts, either in bash, like a shell command that we do, or piping things into a netcat connection, or running these through SSH and SSH pass, etc., or get flag in Python. So we'll mark this as complete, and we are all done. But that's a good practice that I really like and I try to encourage is documenting your solutions. If not in a get flag script, just make a small note, solution.txt, how you did it. Um, if you can write a get flag script, if you can automate it in some way, I do encourage doing that just so you can, okay, see the steps and like actually execute them so your flag is returned back to you. Cool. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you're enjoying the series. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to the people that support me. Um, this list is getting longer and I'm so, so grateful for it. Uh, I say it all the time, but I cannot say it enough. So $1 a month on Patreon will give you a special shout out just like this at the very end of the video. I'm waiting on number 10. Um, if you're willing to, uh, $1 a month will give you that shout out. $5 a month will give you early access to all of my videos that I record. Normally I record in bulk, but I let YouTube upload gradually and kind of daily. So if you want all the content right away, you can do that. Please like the video if you did like the video. <laughs> Comment if you're willing to. Maybe give me a subscription. And if you really want to support me, check me out on Patreon. Thanks so much, guys. Later.